Now let's begin this week's journey of grace with my wife, the co-pastor of World Changes Church International, Taffy Dollar. Now she's going to share a message on recognizing the power of thoughts. I tell you guys, this message is so relevant for your life and will make a noticeable and lasting difference. I'll see you after this message. We as human beings have between 12,000 to 60,000 thoughts a day. And of those 12,000, 60,000 thoughts, 80% of those are negative. And of those, 95% are negative and repetitive. And I heard that, I said, 12,000? That seems like a lot of thoughts. It's almost to the point of, what is that, a thousand, a certain thousand per minute. I don't know what the math is. Mathematicians can help me out on that one, but it's a lot of thoughts. And I just can't imagine that many thoughts at a time. And I started thinking, because, you know, some of us may not have 60,000 thoughts. You know, some days it's enough for me to keep up with my phone. <laughs> enough for me to know where I parked my car when I came out of the parking lot. It's like, 60,000, really, Lord? That's a lot of thoughts. And some of y'all don't try to act like you know you get 60 thoughts a day because you don't. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because regardless, those negative thoughts are those things that are trying to destroy our lives. And so we must understand about our thoughts because this is indicative of where we are and where we live. So I had brought something, and this might be a good time to share with you. Now, we have to make up in our minds that what the enemy says is trash. His thoughts are trash. He has no authority over me. And so when he says, you know, you better worry. You know your kids outside. They're fearless. You don't know. Something might happen. You better stay up all night. You better blow them up, text, call, show up, roll up, <laughs> show out, whatever. <laughs> See, my mom was old school. She would make a scene. <laughs> but when those thoughts come, you got to make up in your mind. I'm going to put worry, this worry right here, trash. When they say, oh, you just uninvited, you are unwanted, you never were part of the party or part of the guest list, you're lame, you're boring, no one wants to be with you, and that's why you just need to go and kill yourself. You know what? You just ball that up, that rejection. Put it right in here. And when he says, uh, uh, go and start a business, and the Lord says, go do something that you've never done before. Well, Lord, you know, I, my family, we don't do that. They said, and they don't think that that's a good idea. And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know if that's for me. That's fear talking. God said, I want you to go to minister these strippers and minister these prostitutes. I'm like, Lord, I know I done done stuff, but I don't know about all this stuff. 
And you know what I had to do? I had to ball that fear up and put it right in here. What do you need to ball up today? Anxiety? There's a lot of anxiety in the world today. Anxious. On edge. Fearful. Cautious thoughts. Worrying about what the doctor said. Worrying about what this company is going to do. Worrying about whether they're going to lay off people. Worrying about this report from the financier. Worrying about, am I going to have enough money to pay my rent? And am I going to have enough to feed my child? You know what? Put this anxiety, put it right here in the trash. Sometimes when you do things that people are unfamiliar with, the enemy in a lot of instances uses people, they're going to talk about you. They're going to talk. People love to talk. Just give them something to talk about. <laughs> they're going to talk anyway. Somebody said, they, that's never been done before. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't do that because that's a little risky. But you know what? Change makers, world changers do things that are a little risky. God says, go to the club, and it's late, and he says, go. You got to go. Do what he says to do. Amen? Amen? Do what he says to do. I'm not good enough. You ever heard the enemy say that? Oh, you're not good enough. I mean, who, who are you to be on this platform and tell anybody anything? Because my husband asked me to. That's why I'm up here. So don't fall for that lie, don't let that fortress, don't let that stronghold continue to be there in your life. There are always going to be people who are better, people prettier, people more handsome, people more smarter, people faster, people more intelligent. But you know what? That's all right. I am who God says I am. I can be who God says I can be. I can do what God says I can do, and I'm going to go where God says I can go. So you have to make up in your mind that I am enough in Him. Amen? Got a lot of people who don't believe in women preachers. I'm here to tell you women preach. Women can preach. Women will preach. Women are called to preach. I don't know where the enemy had that lie from a long time ago. I'm telling you, we are coming for every lie and turning it upside down. Got a bunch of patriarchy and a bunch of uh, people in the pulpit who have no idea living under bondage and living under the law and want to keep everybody else under bondage and keep everybody else under the law. But we're going far in God. We're going to where God has called us to be, to prove the acceptable, the good, the will of God, because we're changing our minds. We're transforming our thinkings. We're renewing ourselves concerning the things that God wants to do in our life. Amen? So let them talk. The enemy says, nobody loves me. Nobody loves you. You may think that nobody loves you. That's why you got to go and sit on a bridge somewhere. Absolutely not. God loves you. We love you. So we have to begin to realize 
so many things. Depression. Somebody say, put it in the trash. <laughs> Guilt. <laughs> Hurt. <laughs> Victimization. <laughs> Self-hatred. <laughs> Suicide. I'm afraid. Come on, let's give God some praise for that. Last thing I want to show you. What we have to do is get the seed, get some seeds. The word is a seed, the incorruptible seed. Because when we don't deal with our thoughts, particularly these negative thoughts, the negative emotions cause problems in our immune function. Negative thoughts have a tendency to make you sick. They affect your metabolism. They affect your hormones. When we worry, we are wearing the path a little deeper every time. So when it, something upsets you, don't add fuel to the fire. Just step back, observe what's going on. Okay, that hurt my feelings. That didn't feel right. And then ask the Lord to help you with that. Maybe they didn't mean it. Maybe I'm being a little too sensitive today. Maybe I'm just in my feelings, but I know, God, you have a plan for me. So let me just pause. Instead of being so quick to cut off everybody, to dismiss everything, because it may just be my emotions or it may just be the enemy telling lies, because that's what he does. He lies. He is a liar. That's what he does. He lies to us, and he uses people in many instances that will open themselves up to him to be a liar. So we have to realize who's talking and what's going on in our lives. And so begin to recognize the positive. When you have a positive experience, just begin to allow it to settle in your heart, things that are positive, so that it can begin to create those new pathways, so that it can begin to rewire your mind and rewire your brain and rewire your existence and not be so quick, because that's how we take thoughts captive, and that's how we begin to renew our mind. So a couple things that— um, we have to do as we begin to kind of bring this to a close is take the seed of the Word of God. And this seed, you have to put it in this plant. Take the seed of the Word, which is love. Everything is based either on love or fear. Faith in God's Word, faith in the love of God, faith in what the blood of Jesus has accomplished for us, faith in what the will of God is for our life. And we have to do what? Plant it. You've got to what? Sow that seed. You've got to sow that acceptance that I'm accepted by God. I am His beloved. He loves me with an undying, unyielding, relentless love. He's in hot pursuit of me. He's mad about me. You've got to plant it, that acceptance in here. You've got to plant the fact that I have abundant life, and with long life, He shows me His salvation. I'm not going to search 
short circuit my life because of the thoughts and the lies of the enemy. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to kill myself. I'm not going to allow the enemy to come, steal, kill, and to destroy my life. Because Jesus came to what? Give us life and life what? Life more abundantly. So I'm going to plant that. I'm going to plant that seed in my heart, the abundant life, the new creation in Christ, that the old has passed away and what all things have become new. And I'm a new creation in Him. I'm a species of being that's never existed before. You ain't seen all that I am in the earth. I'm just getting started. Just keep looking. Keep watching. Keep showing up. So I plant the seed, and I water it, and I plant, and I water it. I began to plant trust instead of worrying. I trust you, God. I trust you where my marriage is concerned. I trust you where my business is concerned. I trust you with my life. I trust you when I get on this plane. I trust you when I go to the store. I trust you when I send my kids to school. I trust you when I go to work. I trust you when I go to bed that I'm going to get back up in the morning. I trust you. We plant the seed of the Word of God. Amen? Amen? And we keep planting it. He is my provider. Come on. I ain't recessing, not going backwards. I don't care what the world is doing. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is Jehovah Kamola. When I make the decision to eat from the right tree, he's going to compensate me. He is a rewarder. He wants to reward you for the choices that you make, for the decisions that you make, and the things concerning his plan for your life. So we plant the seed. We keep planting. We keep sowing. We keep trusting. We keep standing. We keep trusting. We keep believing. You got to water it in order to keep planting and to keep trusting and keep believing. I'm telling you. And then you know what will happen? All of a sudden, this comes up. You went from this to this. I hope you enjoyed today's message and pray one of the key points you take away is the transformative power that comes when we take control of our thoughts. Grace helps us become who God intended us to be. It's not us doing things to get from God, but being transformed by His grace to reflect His glory and love to the world. Taff and I started this conference years ago because we wanted people to gain full understanding of how Jesus' grace affects every single area of your life. When you understand that, your whole life will change. So. Will the lives of everybody around you, everybody you come in contact with, when they see change going on in you, it'll become contagious and affect their lives as well. That's what you can expect from the Grace Life Conference. The music, fellowship, and overall experience are exceptional. There's nothing like it anywhere in the world. But more important than the experience is the word and the revelation. When you leave, your life will be changed. And that's what I want for all of God's people, for their lives to be changed. Now be sure to join me tomorrow as we dig a little deeper into this journey of grace and stay tuned in. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay with us all week. 
for some very important information, both before the message, after the message, and all week long. If you haven't registered, you want to make sure you do that right now. Grace Life 2024, The Reunion. God bless you.